dear friends, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you want to hear how all those changes I made at the end of last semester are going, please stay tuned because I'm going to give you an update for my fourth grader and my kindergartner for the first four weeks of our second semester. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, I'm actually going to talk about both my kids in this video. The last couple updates have mo mostly been focused on my son because I really only had some tweaks and changes and things to update you on with my fourth grader and not my kindergartner. So this video, I do have a couple things to update you on for my daughter, so I will roll those in at the end. I'm going to start off the video here talking to you about how all those changes went that we made. We made some major switches to language arts and our reading plan towards the end of uh, last semester, things that we're gonna start at the beginning of this semester. And we're four weeks in, and I thought maybe this would be a good time to let you know how everything went. So I'm just gonna refresh your memory a little bit in case you didn't watch last month's uh, update. I will link that below if you wanna check it out because I'm not gonna get into why we changed things and all of that, I'm just gonna let you know how the changes worked. So if you wanna see the whys and all of that, head down to the description after this video and check out the previous month's update. But one thing that we brought in to this semester to kind of uh, change things up a little bit in reading is this moving beyond the page unit. This is a poetry unit. And again, I mentioned in my flip through, I printed this off myself and, and kind of a, an enlarged image sort of thing. It was kind of a homemade version. And so this isn't print quality from the company. I'm sure it's much nicer from the company. I actually print, uh, purchased the online version of this course, which I really, really liked using. And I printed off the pages myself. So uh, that's, that's why this probably doesn't look super professional. But we absolutely loved this unit. Both my son and I loved it. Sorry about that noise. Sounds like my husband is home and there goes the garage. So sorry for that noise. But um, my son and I both loved this unit. One thing I will say though, this is a true language arts unit. It's not just like reading or literature. So if you're looking for something that's just comprehension questions and vocabulary and all of that, this will have more than you need. This actually has things like uh, writing assignments, grammar exercises, uh, spelling uh, opportunities, uh, that kind of thing. So it really can be your full language arts and that's actually how it's used if you purchase the Moving Beyond the Page package. That's how this is used. Sorry, there goes that noise again. Um, th so there's actually more here than what you need and that was kind of a bit of a surprise. I, I wasn't expecting there to be you know, comprehensive language arts, but if I would have went back and actually looked at the product, I pr would have probably seen that, but that's okay. We just skipped over those things to meet our purpose. I didn't need to have a full language arts. We didn't need writing and grammar. We just needed uh, literature uh, analysis in a very light way. Um, since it was poetry, it was more about learning the mechanics of a poem and different terminology related to, to writing poetry. And we also needed uh, some uh, comprehension, not comprehension exercises, but um, uh, maybe like activities to help my son uh, understand the genre of poetry versus the other genres that he can read. So that's kind of what I was looking for. And I have to say, this did not disappoint. By the end of the unit, my son was loving the poems that he memorized and he even wrote his own poetry. There's actually multiple opportunities to write your own poetry. But again, we didn't take too many of them because I wasn't looking for a, uh, a uh, composition course. But we did take some opportunities to write poetry. And then the final project was to do like a poetry uh, reading event where you create a program and you have poems that you recite from memory and some that you read and some that you present that were original works. And so my, my uh, son did that just this past week and you had to create a program, a written a program that you could pass out to your guests. You had to create some refreshments or prepare some refreshments and uh, like put on a, a program of your poetry reading. So he did a fantastic job with that. I highly recommend the Moving Beyond the Page Language Arts units, whether it's for full language arts or just the reading portion, I think you'll find it really delightful. 
Okay, next up for my fourth grader is the change that we're anticipating making. One thing that happened in uh, the kind of uh, last few days maybe of last semester, right before Christmas break, and kind of continued into our new semester was you know, that feeling I was getting from my son that he's getting bored and underutilized and not challenged and feeling stale in his math. I wanna let you guys know, I knew this was a possibility when we switched to BJU Press Math. That's what we're using. I knew it was a possibility because the reason we left the, the program in first grade, we used it for kindergarten and first grade with my son, the reason that we switched was because it moved as slow as molasses in January. That's how my grandpa used to <laughs> let us know when we were being really slow. Told us we were slower than molasses in January and that's how we feel with this math program. I decided to give it another try for fourth grade because I've shared with you before my problems in teaching Singapore. I just can't get my head around how to teach it as the, as the homeschool teacher. My son really didn't have any problem uh, grasping the concepts per se, but towards the end of our time with Singapore, we got really frustrated together because I, it was my issue. I was just having trouble in presenting the material to him. So I went back to what we both knew, <laughs> was both comfortable, math, math four from BJU Press, and I was thinking and hoping that the pace had picked up, that maybe it just started off in a gentler approach, it just started slower, and it would eventually pick up. And come to come to be, we are halfway through the course, or more than halfway through the course. We are actually out of 16 chapters. We are right now in chapter nine, about ready to finish chapter nine, and move in to chapter 10. So just a little past halfway. And we have yet, with, with, with two exceptions, Okay, two of those chapters are exceptions to this, but just with those two exceptions, we have not encountered anything new yet. And in looking ahead, we still won't do it for another chapter or two. And that's based on where we left off in Singapore 3B last year. And that is becoming kind of frustrating to both of us because I feel like, oh, I'm stalling him. And he feels like, when am I gonna do something new, mom? I really want to learn this or that, and he starts naming off things, things that I know we would have encountered had we stayed with Singapore. So I'm starting to look around. I have a, a process I go through. I will leave a link down below where I kind of went, went over this process with you, but I like to really give curriculum a good shot. I don't like to just willy-nilly go and buy new things. I will try and add things. That's, what, that's the step I'm on now where I just try and add things to it. So I purchased these. I actually put up a flip through of these last week for you to see. So you should be able to see that, but I'm, I'm adding things to it and going to see if that works, but I am fairly certain we will probably be replacing this. I have my eye on a couple things. I am looking at horizons math and I'm looking at dimensions math. Dimensions math actually has a teacher guide that's more akin to the teacher's instruction guides that I know how to use. And so I'm looking at that, I'm looking at dimensions math, and I'm looking at horizons math. I know those are two completely different things, but one thing I'm noticing is that uh, one, one of the issues we might be having with finding that math home for us, which we loved Singapore if, if mommy could have figured it out. But since I can't, one of the, one of the things that I, I think is, is our issue is I'm almost wondering if, my son needs a spiral program and I've only offered him mastery. And so the reason I say that is because he's not complaining about lack of challenge. He's complaining about the pacing, the, the slowness of it. And I'm wondering if we were constantly kind of cycling things that maybe he wouldn't feel like, you know, we're just going through so slowly through one topic at a time. I don't know. I, I'm still in the, the research phase and figuring this out. I'm Like I said, I'm about 80 to 90% sure that we're gonna be setting this aside. So next month's update, you might see me put that, throw away the curriculum <laughs> subject line again uh, in another update video. I hope not. I hope that adding these things and maybe uh, doubling up on lessons or something, we've, we've tried that. We've tried skipping over certain lessons. You know, we've tried all those things that I've shared with you in, in those Make Your Curriculum Work videos. 
If I didn't mention it, I will leave it down below uh, for you. But I've, I've, I've talked to you about that, right? So I'm trying to do uh, what I've you know shared with you uh, to make this work. But I, I think we probably will be setting it aside. We'll see. If maybe these, these extra books will help and uh, speeding it up a little bit more will help, we'll have to wait and see. But we are becoming frustrated with our math. And now finally on to my baby girl, my little kindergartner who is blazing through. She is on book C. It, there are four books in the kindergarten phonics program, uh, First Start Reading from Memorial Press. She is on book C and I'll just show you, we are like at week 19 of school, I think, or 20, something like that. And I'll just show you, this is her, this was her lesson today. Okay, so these are kind of still the CVC words that she's working on. But then tomorrow she's going, or not probably not tomorrow, probably Monday. We usually don't do her lessons on Friday. But uh, she's going to be uh, working on practicing her uh, sight words a little bit there. And then this is about what she's reading. About that much. Okay, so that's where she is. I have ordered her a couple more readers that Memorial Press recommends for extra practice because she wants them. She has pretty much read her entire first reader and they've only scheduled like three or four stories out of it and she just sat down and read the whole thing. So I had to get her some more readers because she was getting a little bored with that. Um, one other thing I will mention is that I was concerned at the beginning of the year that this was going to be too much writing for her. I was also concerned that it was going to maybe move a little too quickly through the sight words. And I'm happy to report at the halfway mark, she is not having any trouble with either of those things. However, I would suggest if you get this program, you do not have any additional hand, handwriting curriculum. There's no extra handwriting needed with this. We actually have these really simple pages from um, A Reason for Handwriting, and the font is really, really big. I mean, it's like this size of a letter, and she, so just so that she can get the actual mechanics of the letters down, because this this is, is kind of small, I think, for a kindergartner, but uh, we, we practice on those just for the formation of the letter, but that's it, and if she does it maybe like, there's maybe like six letters that she writes. But then this is all she does um, for handwriting for the most part. There is plenty in there, and I really don't think you need or should add more because just think of those little hands, those little muscles are just kind of uh, getting used to doing some work, and we don't want to like tax them, you know, we don't want to do too much. So I would say if you use this, no extra handwriting needed. I will also say if you use this that you need to feel free to not use all the components that Memorial Press schedules. There is a lot in their kindergarten program, you guys. There is a lot. There is a lot in their kindergarten phonics program. I have done a video on how I'm using it. I will leave that down below. We are not using all the components. If we did, I think I would be giving you a different update right now. Just to be honest, I feel like we have pared it down to a meaningful, joyful experience, and I think those other things would change that for us. So just just know that out of all the curriculum that I've looked at for kindergarten, I feel like Memoria Press has the most options for you of what you want to bring in, but I don't feel that you need to do everything. There's, there's a ton there. So that is one thing on her uh, phonics I wanted to share with you. The other thing I wanted to share with you is math. I told you we were gonna finish math early with her. We have, I think I counted today, 28 pages left in her math book and it's week 20 of school. So uh, we're definitely gonna finish that early and we're just now getting to telling time and money. So we've already covered addition and subtraction in the very simple form, like up to sums of six and seven, I think. And uh, so she's not you know, doing double digit or anything like that, but certainly um, way ahead of where my son's curriculum took him in uh, kindergarten. So she will be doing money and the clock and then I will be needing to find other things for her for math. So what I'm thinking of doing is I did purchase the level one math lessons for living education and we've been kind of interspersing that in because she loves the little stories about Charlotte and Charlie. So we've been interspersing that in after we finished uh, certain topics in her math book. And so we will continue to do that. We probably will finish Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 
right around the same time that we finish her uh, Singapore kindergarten math. So we'll probably finish both of those at the same time. And what I decided to do is just, I did not want to do this, but I looked at Singapore 1A and 1B and the first, oh, probably six, no, not that many, probably three, the first probably three or four chapters are things we've covered in kindergarten. So I'm just going to start Singapore 1A and 1B with her at the end of this year and just um, round out the rest of the year with that and then pick it back up in the fall when we start first grade. So really didn't want to start first grade math with her, but when I see where 1A and 1B start, it's pretty much kindergarten math anyway. So we'll just do that now and uh, I'll call it a day. I'm not going to buy anything else. <laughs> so that is uh, all I wanted to share with you for my first grader or my my kindergartner and my fourth grader. I'm moving ahead of myself a bit. And I hope that you found it helpful to kind of hear how things are working in our home. If you're considering using the same materials in your home, uh, please leave me any questions you have down below. If you have any thoughts about uh, a spiral based math or or spiral versus mastery math and how that kind of helps kids that have like a, a pacing issue <laughs> that, that, that want things to move a little quicker. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Have you found spiral versus mastery to be more uh, successful with those kiddos? I'd love to hear your thoughts about that down below. Let me know what you think of Horizons and Dimensions Math if you have experience with those. I do take uh, a lot of what you guys say to heart. So uh, please leave that down below and I will catch you in the next video.